All right. Well, we, uh, we got into a, a debate just backstage, so I'm really excited to bring it on stage. Uh, David and Jane, I thought it would make sense if you guys could just explain a little bit of what you guys do and how data and privacy comes into your world. I'm sure many of you use David's product, but take it away, David. Hi, I'm David Gordiansky. I run Anchor Free. We make Hotspot Shield. I'm sure a lot of you guys uh, have probably used it. Um, it's the world's most popular internet privacy and freedom platform. Actu the actual technology under the hood is the world's most used VPN product. And so for us, what we do in a nutshell starts with a mission. And it's really why we do what we do, which is more important than what we do. And we're basically. We believe that personal privacy and internet freedom are basic human rights. And we believe that providing people with the choice to protect their personal data online is extremely important. So the way we're thinking about privacy and big data is we're thinking that providing people the optionality to turn privacy on and off when they want it is a basic human right that is going to be impactful to billions of people around the world. And as an entrepreneur, I want to think and I want to encourage other entrepreneurs to think about ways to solve real billion-person problems. There's too many people that are thinking about the next iPhone game or the next, the next startup that isn't important. Let's talk about what is important. And I think pro protecting our data is extremely important. I'll hand it off to you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, well, my name is Jane Zavalishina, and I'm with Yandex Data Factory. Our company provides uh, artificial intelligence-based services for, for the other businesses to optimize um, uh, their processes, different ones. So basically, the data is our raw source material is something we work with quite a lot. Uh, and our take on uh, well, big data and uh, privacy is probably slightly different. I would like to see some balance there because you know, it reminds me, uh, in the early era of automobiles, in the UK, uh, there was a set of laws called red flag laws. Because every automobile was supposed to be accompanied with at least three people with red flags, and at least one of these people was supposed to go ahead of the car, in front of the car, with this flag. <laughs> right? And that's how the cars were supposed to drive around. So what it teaches us is that, of course, when we uh, bump into some new technological advances, we get scared. That's very natural. And sometimes uh, we try to protect ourselves in a way which basically uh, rips us off all the advantages of these new technologies. So I think our take on uh, data protection well, there should be some data protection, of course, but we don't want that to become like red flag laws that basically stops us from getting all the advantages of these technologies that they can bring us. I'm curious, um, by a show of hands in the audience, how many of you guys use a VPN, a virtual private network? Wow. Wow, almost everyone. And it's, OK, one more time. And how many of you guys used one five years ago? OK, so still a lot of people, but a lot more recently. That, that kind of segues into, I think, one of the most interesting things we were all talking about beforehand, which is with so much more data out there today, um, growing clearly not at a linear pace, at way faster than that, um, are we more vulnerable than ever before? Will we continue to be more vulnerable from a data standpoint? We, we are more vulnerable. You can see that a lot more people, almost everyone in this room, raised their hand to using a VPN. I mean, people are becoming a lot more concerned. And you have, the thing is, you can't talk about privacy and not talk about security, because they're really intertwined. You, you have major hacks like Target and Yahoo and Equifax, millions of people losing their identity, losing their data. And I think whereas five years ago, people thought that privacy was something that, you know, a small group of people cared about. Today, it's become a real mega trend. It's something that almost everyone in the world cares about. But I think I want to make one distinction. People don't care about privacy all the time. We've done surveys of our users, of millions of our users, and we've just ha surpassed 500 million installs of our Hotspot Shield VPN product. We've surveyed a lot of our users, and what we found is that 70% of the time, people actually don't care about privacy. They're happy to share pictures on Facebook. They're happy to do whatever it is that they do without any privacy protection. 
for 70% of the time. But 30% of the time, privacy is extremely important to them. And for a lot of people, especially people living in repressive markets and so on, privacy is a matter of liberty and life. But even in places like the United States, we've seen massive growth um, of applications around privacy. About five years ago, Hotspot Shield was somewhere in the top 1,000 most popular apps uh, in the App Store. Today, we're in the top 50 most popular apps in the App Store. So lots of people are understanding that, look, security and privacy go together. We don't want our data to be hacked. It's extremely important to provide very simple to use privacy protections for billions of people. I, th I think people have woken up and have realized it's important. Jane, I'm curious, uh, from more the sort of business side, are businesses uh, ha having embraced more data, are they starting to be a little more concerned about how that data could be accessed or used? Or what, what happens more in, in your world? Well, of course, both. Yeah. Right? The businesses are happy to have more data. Uh, they learn more and more on how to use them to provide kind of the next level of quality in their services and next level of customer care and all these kind of things. On the other hand, of course, it raises more questions on how to deal with this data, how to make sure that they are secured, protected, and so on. But uh, again, I think when we are talking about more vulnerability, which of course is there, right? Uh, we need to take into account two things. First, it's always like that. With the next level of comfort, we always become slightly more vulnerable, right? That, that's how it is in, uh, with us as humans. On the other hand, what also happens, and we could see that uh, when we asked people about VPN, is that it's not just vulnerability raises, but also our awareness and our, let's say, hygienic practices on how to make sure that you know, we wash our hands digitally and not to get uh, you know, into some trouble. Uh, let me just give you an example. Um, when my daughter was five years old, she wanted to have her own email. And we had discussions about that. And she, uh, for the sake of argument, she asked her grandmother, Grandma, tell me, how were you when you were allowed to have your own email? <laughs> well, said grandmother, 45. <laughs> uh, but the thing is that, uh, well, we agreed, and she had her email. But when she was 10, I suddenly, uh, accidentally realized that she has another email box which she opened herself. I had no idea about it. I asked her why. And she said, well, mom, you know, I register on some websites like for online games and something. I wouldn't use my like, real email for that, right? Yeah. So by that moment, her grandma was still using her own email for everything, but she was already she knew better than that mm -hmm. wow. by herself. But what I'm saying is that people who are living in this digital world, they are kind of getting this, right? And while, yes, technically vulnerability opens, we also become more aware, more trained, uh, and more ready for that. Yeah. That's really interesting. Um, you know, and, and especially in the context of email, I think of uh, you know, the ads I see that are based on emails I send or uh, friend requests or messages on Facebook that seem to only make sense based on what I said in WhatsApp. And, and, and I think, you know, it makes me wonder about the sort of bleed of data from one part of a service to another. And I'm curious, do you guys think that um, we should be demanding more of sort of the leading tech companies to make clear where our data is going there, or do you think it's not, not so much a concern? I think, I think that it's going to be, I think it is a concern, but I don't think that demanding that Facebook does something um, you know, better with our data and doesn't share it is going to be effective. I think uh, probably a more effective strategy is to create products that will counter what Facebook and what others do, and will put privacy really at the center, or at least as a, as a meaningful feature. Um, of the application. What we're seeing today is we're seeing a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of app developers come to us and saying, basically, do you, can we integrate your product inside of our applications? So we've actually launched a software development kit, an SDK, privacy as a service that many, many app developers integrate inside of their applications. Um, and you look at you know, the Facebook and WhatsApp example, and you see that like Snapchat in some areas is eating their lunch because Snapchat you know, deletes your data when you share it. 
right? You see uh, WhatsApp versus Telegram, and you see more and more people moving to Telegram because it's in fully encrypted and they don't store your data. And so you see people starting to make decisions based on how companies uh, deal with their data. Um, less so than by like what the privacy policy says, because that's complicated and nobody understands that. And more so based on what the product functionality actually does as it relates to your privacy. Now, do you guys uh, generally feel like um, connecting all our devices, feeding, feeding more of our lives into these data streams will, has a net positive effect? Or is it possible that on a case-by-case -case basis, you know, we shouldn't want certain things contributing to you know, whatever yeah. algorithm is, is studying them all. Well, I, I think, again, just as before, it's both, right? I mean, it is, of course, on case-by-case -case basis. In general, most probably we do have the positive effect on that. Because, you know, Salesforce's Mark Benioff loves to talk about yeah. his, his internet-connected toothbrush. Yeah. I think, you know, if it, like, do we need a toothbrush connected to the internet? Right. Would our toothbrush be hacked? Well, I don't it know. It depends. <laughs> because, in fact, what happens in most of the cases, including those cases we were discussing, you know, like with Google and Facebook, is that in many cases, people are happy to share this data. So what we want to make sure is that uh, there is some transparency on how this data is being used. But if transparency is there, it can be a very good and fair case for the whole market. Again, just to give you an example, uh, probably most of us wouldn't like uh, to know that our insurance company is kind of secretly spying on us uh, by the agreement with the car company. So the yeah. car downloads the data about how we drive, and it can influence our insurance. Mm -hmm. We would be very unhappy to know that. On the other hand, there are already quite a lot of insurance companies which are piloting this kind of service openly. You can actually agree to provide your data on how you are driving, basically provide the logs from your car to your insurance provider, and you are being incentivized to do that by much better conditions for your insurance. In this case, everything is transparent, and people are happy to share. Yeah, I would just add that uh, I think transparency is only a piece of it. I think the other piece is a really easy way to signal that you don't want your data to be collected in this instance, right? So you're OK. You're, you've got your IoT devices. We're going to have 20 billion IoT devices growing to 100 billion in the next five years. You're, you've got your smart home. You may want your smart toothbrush. You may appreciate the fact that your mattress sends data about how well you sleep to your doctor. That could all be very, very useful and good. But you need to have a way to very simply say, but I don't want this data to be sent anywhere, or I want to turn this off. You basically need a, a very simple privacy switch that you can flip on and off as you please. Yeah, I think it sounds good. But uh, honestly, I don't really believe it's going to work, except for very niche applications. But, but I think like you've already seen that it yes. works, because you have every person in this room raise their hand and said, yeah. we, we use a VPN. And what is a VPN? It's a simple privacy switch. That's you click true. a button. And, and your privacy is protected. That's the niche I'm talking about. Because basically, I'm quite sure that most of the people who use VPN here in this room, they're doing this to uh, access their work email. So basically, there are people from their work, IT guys, oh, yeah. they set it up. They make all of the security decisions. And that's how you can only you know, just say on or off. Yeah. But when you are supposed to make this kind of decisions by yourself, my opinion is most of the people they just don't want that. Okay, they don't, I, I, they I think want should, to be taken care of. Okay, I think we should ask a question of the audience again. How many people use a VPN for personal reasons, not work? Well, half of, of those yeah, who half, are yeah. using it. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, yeah. yeah, so I, I think it's a considerable number, but yeah. many of us still don't. Yeah. And I think my question is you know, couldn't one argue that even a VPN is a, the, the lock on your door? That is one level of protection, but against yeah. a very disciplined burglar, it's not going <laughs> to save your house. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And it also it really depends on what VPN you're using, because there's not all VPNs are created equal. And does your VPN protect your data, or does it log your data? I mean, there's, there's, a, lot, there's a lot of details there. What kind of encryption does the VPN use, um, and so on. So I think, I think that has to be taken into consideration as well. Um, but but you, well, you mentioned, David, I wanted to make sure we got to this. You said you do panels with the biggest tech companies, and they usually send their lawyers. That's can right. You, can you tell them why they send their lawyers? Yeah, absolutely. Look, over the last 10 years, I've been on panels with uh, people from Facebook, Google, and Microsoft. And 
my co-panelists are always the, the lawyers from these companies. They're never the product people. And so the question is, why aren't these big companies sending their product people you know, to talk about privacy? And the answer is because privacy for a lot of these companies is something defensive. It's something they tell their lawyer to go figure out. And, but what I see as a major shift is more and more companies are integrating uh, privacy into the core of their products. And I think what we're going to see is over the next five years, the amount of data collected about us online will be exponentially larger. And with that, people are going to have a larger demand for privacy, and companies are going to start incorporating privacy into their products. I'll tell you, we've, when we launched our software development kit for privacy as a service, the first year of that, major security companies have come to us and integrated the software development kit. And it was only the security industry, and that's it. Today, we're seeing developers from all kinds of industries, games, social networks, uh, you name it, that are putting privacy into their applications. They believe it's going to help them sell more product, not just protect from some legal battle, but actually sell more product. Well, as I said, that's where I disagree, actually. From my previous experience in the, in the payment systems, what I've noticed is that, that people are actually, in most of the cases, again, there are some niche applications, but in most of the cases, people are not ready to invest either efforts or money, additional money, into their security and privacy. Uh, not because they're so stupid and don't want to, be, to have their privacy and security in place, but because, in most of the cases, they expect that to be kind of an immanent property of the product itself. So it's not like the product will sell better because it's more safe and more private. It's just if you are not comply with these expectations, you may have trouble. That's why it's more risk than, than something else. It also brings us to the conclusion that, uh, in fact, of course, many people here, most of people here are from IT industry. Okay. So when we are talking about using VPNs, well, I'm not surprised with the results. Ask your grandmas, guys. But, they but are probably not using VPNs, which means that it's up to us as an industry to take care of all that for like you know normal users yep. and to so, make sure that our services our products are sufficiently protected so i think that's true from the if you're running a payment company people expect that your payment system is going to be secure and private but i don't think that's true for the rest of the industry and i'll tell you i mean we've got half a billion people when we're talking about people using vpns we have half a billion people on hotspot shield growing by 250,000 downloads every single day Every day, 250,000 people download Hotspot Shield from Anchor Prime to their phones and computers. Mm -hmm. It's becoming very, very mainstream, and people are deciding what products to use uh, based on whether their privacy and security is going to be protected. But David, I, I have to push back as well um, in that I'm sure many of people in this room are like me, where in some situations, they're extremely security aware, yeah. and I have a VPN on my phone. I also authenticate a bunch of apps through Facebook and Google oh, yeah. and don't, sup don't read the fine print on yeah. what I'm agreeing to when I do that because I, I also value convenience. Absolutely. So don't you think convenience will always be a limit to sort of best practices there? I do. I, I actually totally agree with you. I, th I think first, uh, first of all, as I mentioned, people don't care about their privacy 70% of the time but care a lot 30% of the time. And the second thing is, uh, I think convenience will always be really important. So the challenge to the security industry at large is to make security and privacy just as convenient, convenient as clicking that like button on Facebook. Right? You need to have a button that says, you know, make me private. And that's, that's where we're trying to take the industry, right? Yeah, but you're just transferring the problem into another segment. So now it becomes on how much do you trust, well, not Google, but those guys who are operating this security button, <laughs> right? So Absolutely. the problem is yeah, still yeah, there. Yeah. It oh, just yeah. shifts into another layer of services. Yeah, you definitely <laughs> have to trust. Them, but, but from Google's point of view, they're, you know they're selling your data. That's their business. Um, you, know, well, I can, you know, I can kind of make this following point. The first three companies in the world that have reached a billion people online were Yahoo, Google, and Facebook. And all three of these companies built their business on selling user data to advertisers and other parties. I think the next billion user companies are going to be companies that are in the business of protecting your data. 
<laughs> Never gonna happen. Well, I, I <laughs> hope see. at least. Well, we have to make a bet. I hope at least. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. We'll make a bet. <laughs> We're gonna check in with them. I hope you guys have some stuff to maybe argue about with your your friends and colleagues because I think this is a tricky question. We are out of time though, so thank you guys very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks.